Hello guys and welcome to Daddy Share Space. So today I want to talk a little bit about how I got into doing my own lawn care or really why I did it. Um, obviously I'm not a professional by any stretch of the imagination but um, just kind of want to give a little bit of a backdrop. Um, obviously I'm a DIYer at heart. Um, I DIY things from auto repair to my own lawn care to fixing things around the house and I'm uh, actively trying to teach myself um, how to make cabinetry and uh, advance in woodworking. So um, this particular, I guess, episode is basically me just talking about why I took over my lawn care. So about seven, eight years ago, I used to live in Oakland. Um, we actually rented a home down there and um, we actually paid um, some gentlemen to come by and do our yard. I want to say it was for, you know, maybe probably about $115 a month, I believe, if I'm remembering properly. And they would come out like every couple of weeks to actually, you know, manage the yard, you know, cut the yard and, you know, trim bushes, so on and so forth. And the yard was actually really small. So it wasn't much to maintain and they weren't doing anything uh, spectacular. Like um, in the front of the house, it used to have mulch and I actually got rid of all that mulch. I dug up the ground myself and I actually planted grass seed and watered it and did all of that to, to you know, to get it um, looking halfway decent. So um, that $115 a month did not include that kind of service. Um, so that being said, um, you know, that hundred and something dollars a month, I mean, let's just round it off and just say a hundred dollars a month, that's $1,200 a year. And um, what I determined back then, this is when I bought my Ego lawnmower and I believe my first Ego trimmer. Uh, I sat down and at that time, I think it would cost me about $500 to buy both of those pieces of equipment. And in Oakland, California, you know, managing your yard can be kind of like an all year round thing. It's not like living, um, say like in the Midwest where in the winter time you've got snow and ice so you don't really use your lawn equipment. You only use it in maybe uh, summer, spring and fall. So that being said, paying uh, $1,200 out a year for someone to come and manage the yard, I felt like I could um, you know, save a little bit of money by spending $500 up front and doing the work myself. The other, th the other benefit was the fact that um, obviously if you sit around, if you're not active, you know, you tend to develop health problems. And, you know, cutting my own yard, obviously I did not, and I still don't own a self-prepared mower. So just getting out and doing, you know, weekly or bi-weekly lawn maintenance is kind of getting the body moving and you know giving you some you know decent exercise um in the past i've actually paid for memberships like 24-hour fitness and it's kind of funny how um, sometimes we may get sedentary jobs and then we just completely forget what it was like to you know you know get physical activity we stop riding bikes because we drive cars and all these things and you know you just kind of get a little bit decrepit over time so I decided to combine the two, you know, getting a little bit more activity in my life, physical activity, with um, saving um, roughly $700 a year by doing my yard myself. Now, when I told the gentlemen that were doing my yard that I was going to go ahead and move on with doing it myself, they promptly rewarded me by, because they would do the um, other people's houses around the neighborhood, they rewarded me by um, filling up my lawn bin with other people's um, stuff. I mean, they completely filled it up. I guess that was their way of kind of sticking it to me in the end, which, you know, that's fine. I mean, to me, that just kind of confirms why I should have stopped paying them, right? Um, so ever since then, that was probably about seven, eight years ago when I, when I started doing that, and it does take time. It does, you know, I mean, time is something that you can't get back. But I've also come to realize, you know, quality also makes a difference. And I'm not a professional, so I'm not able to do professional level work. But um, these gentlemen that I were paying, that I was paying, you know, they were only making like, you know, $115 or so a, a month off of me. So the effort probably wasn't the highest, right? And uh, I wasn't getting any kind of special treatment. 
So not to say that I should for that that amount of money, but even still, you know, I'm, I was saving $700 a year. So fast forward to when I moved from Oakland and uh, we moved into this other house that we were renting at the time. And um, that homeowner actually had a relationship with uh, lawn care people. And so we just continued to pay them for them to do the yard. And it was so ironic because one day I was at work and I got called home from work by my, my wife because uh, some older lady came to the house and said that, you know, this that there was a bush that was kind of grown over the, um, the fire hydrant. You know, it was just like one branch or something. And she actually came all the way down the street on a walker and came to the house to tell us that we needed to, to cut this bush down, right? Kind of getting a little bit ahead of myself. So anyways, um, the lady, you know, comes to the house. She, she, there's like one step to get to the house. And so she stepped up on the step. And when I came to answer the door, she stuck her hand out for me to hold her hand so she could step back down and walk me over and show me how some bush was overgrown. And it was like literally one branch. And she basically told me, this whole bush needs to be taken out of here. And I'm looking at her, I'm like, ma'am, I'm renting? You know, this is not my bush. So, you know, I ended up contacting the landlord. She didn't really say much about it. And mind you, um, the person that was doing the yard maintenance had been doing the yard maintenance years before we actually moved into this home to rent it. So why they decided or why this lady decided to take issue on that particular day is beyond me. But anyway, she did. So um, as I said, you know, I had to come home from work one day because basically one day I got up to go to work and I happened to look down the, the, you know, the street and there was somebody standing in their driveway looking down at me, just staring at me for no reason. I'm like, OK, you know, it's kind of weirdo. So I get in my car, go to work. And then my wife calls me because one of those people, either the lady that was looking at me uh, when I left to go to work or the original lady that came down the street. I don't even know where she lived at on, with the walker um, demanded me to, to basically cut this bush out. They called the city or somebody to come out to file, you know, to complain. And um, so my wife called me because, you know, she's not originally from this country, so she didn't know uh, what to do. So she called me. I come home from work and the guy, you know, he was like he, he was he was, you know, a pretty decent dude. He was like, yeah, you know, this and that and the other. And he actually, you know, he actually cut the bush down himself, you know, just, you know, cut that one little branch or whatever. And, uh, you know, I, it, it just seemed weird to me that basically, you know, you pay for a service and, you know, even the basic minimum standard, like, like we, we changed absolutely nothing. The lady um, that owned the home was paying these people to, to manage the yard. And when we took over um, renting that particular home, that fell on us, that was part of the lease. So we actually paid um, to, you know, get that done. And it was just not up to those neighbors standard, you know, what I'm saying? even though everything, nothing had changed except for we moved in. But anyway, so um, uh, at that particular place, I went ahead and, and I still ended up paying them. But I actually had to address the issue with the um, the lawn care guy. And he wasn't happy. You know, he actually had an attitude about it. So then, you know, when we moved away from there, we only stayed there about a year. And, you know, since then, just like in Oakland, I take full responsibility for my own yard. Right. And um, where I'm at now, I've, I think I've spoken before in another video, the, you know, the front yard just kind of it had a bunch of crabgrass. And basically the crabgrass just kept growing up and, and spreading seeds and it, you know, eventually started to basically smother out the real grass and it required cutting like, you know, like three times a week. And I just didn't feel like I had the time to be cutting the yard three times a week. So that's why I actually have been working over the past few seasons. Um, first, I dug up the ground and I actually laid some sod down. 
And at first it was doing okay. And then all of a sudden the sod just, you know, just kind of died. And in the areas where it died, you know, different spots and stuff like that, the um, weeds in the other portion just started to spread. So last season I kind of let the yard die out. Um, and you know we had a drought here in in uh, in this area of California as well back then, so I let the yard die out, and then um, in I, I think it was well last season towards the end well in the fall, I actually got out there and manually kind of dug up the whole front section because there's you know basically the yards in three parts you've got you know the left side of the driveway the right side of the driveway and then the backyard. And so the backyard had been taken over by weeds and the front, you know, uh, one of the front portions of the yard was taken over by weeds. So I actually ended up digging all that up before, well, not the back, but the, the front area. I dug it all up before winter, right before winter. And so all winter long, it's just basically been dirt. And then I ended up doing some research on crabgrass preventer. I got some crabgrass preventer. I put it down and it said it's supposed to sit for about four months or something like that. Well, you know, got a little antsy because you're supposed to put it around down by, I think it was around uh, March the 15th. So I went ahead and I put that down and, uh, you know, let that sit. And then all of our rainy season basically just passed. So I missed that opportunity to plant the grass seed and, and have it grow. And theoretically, I'm supposed to wait until July to, even though I'm supposed to wait, um, got a little bit antsy because I'd like to see the grass grow in so I bought some grass seed I also bought some uh, some fertilizer or you know lawn food or whatever and I didn't do the backyard yet because I want to see if it takes in the front yard I bought about uh, 20 bags of you know dirt from Home Depot and I took all of that and I kind of uh, basically I I tilled up the ground I spread the grass seed. I spread the 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 um, the uh, I don't know if it's called fertilizer or you know lawn food. Spread that, and it's supposed to feed the lawn for up to like I think six months. Once I put that down, then I put a layer of the dirt. You know, I think it's like three twenty-seven a bag over all of that, and then once I got it down. Um, now I'm in the watering stage, so I'm watering it like three times a day um, so that, you know, or at least that's my research has told me, water it three times a day and then we'll see if that actually sprouts and takes, then I'll go ahead and do the backyard. If it doesn't, then, you know, it's a failed experiment and what I'll do is do what um, I was originally going to do, which is plant uh, Kentucky bluegrass because I think Kentucky bluegrass can be planted in summer and according to the um, crabgrass preventer that I put down um, that lasts for four months and so then it's like after that you want to plant your grass seed so I'm not really following the rules as I guess I'm supposed to but I want to see what happens you know what I mean basically practice is what gets you better and I have planted grass seed before and I have had success before, but at this particular uh, house, it's been a struggle because I had grass seed growing in the backyard and even in the front because I did patch repair at first and the yard looked a little bit better than it does now, but the problem was it was 90% crabgrass. So I just got tired of managing the crabgrass and, and the seedings. And so we're gonna see what happens. You know, I, I will give an update regarding how this is working out and obviously you know getting out there digging up the ground i've used my my ego tiller i've used my manual tiller and you know getting out there that's like keeping me um out of the shop where i would like to be and this is just you know for me this is the life of a diy this is just how it is and um so i'm gonna give you know i'm gonna probably go over a few more um you know or basically share some more about my DIY journey and the things that I chose to take on. Um, obviously on this channel, you know, I show some of my little bootleg projects and as well as, um, you know, tool purchases that I've made. So, I mean, I plan on continuing that. 
um, as long as you know things work out in that favor. Got a few tool um, tool unboxings that um, I've recorded, but I'm not super happy with the footage. So I, I may put it up. I may not. I may kind of alter it and try to do like maybe like a talk through and just show some clips of it. So anyways, but that's what I've been doing. I've been, um, you know, I have had to clear out a bunch of wood out of my shop, a whole bunch of like uh, small off cuts that I'll never use. I took them to the dump and got rid of them. And I'm also looking at um, selling uh, some of the tools that I don't think I will be using going forward. Anyways, guys, thanks for taking time to watch the video, and I'll see you in my next one. Take care.